cloud architect skills, cloud engineering skills, cloud admin skills, which skills are you training? Hopefully it's the ones that are correct for your career. But in my experience, after 20 years of coaching, most people learn the wrong skills for their career and it keeps them from getting to their goals. We're going to talk about what are architect skills for, say, cloud architects, network architects, AI architects, security architects. We'll talk about what are engineering skills, whether that be cloud engineering, network engineering, AI engineering. And we're also going to talk about admin skills, whether that be cloud admin or network admins or sys admin type work. And this is going to be critically important if you want to build your career. So let's first go over the three main roles in technology that we could be talking about. We could be talking about, about the architect role, whether it's a cloud architect, a network architect, an enterprise architect, it really doesn't matter. What we do in these roles is design and planning work. In some way, shape, or form, we're building some form of a strategic blueprint called an architecture to optimize our client's business performance. And that architecture will be to the, what's going on with the people in that organization and how, how the, they will be working, the processes that they will work, as well as the technology that will help those people and processes do their ma deliver maximum results. Now, as an engineer, we're looking for a deep technology professional that understands the technology, understands uh, how to performance tune and optimize the technology and even build the technology. And at that admin level, whether it's a cloud admin, Linux admin, network admin level, we're typically looking for a technician where all of the planning has been done already and all the engineering is done already. And we hand the admin the, the work and say, build this, build it to these specifications. The work and the thinking has already been done. <clears throat> so what does that mean? It means if you want to be a cloud architect and you trained in cloud admin skills, like 90% of the people do, in a million years, you're not going to get there unless you learn cloud architect skills. It means if you want to be a network engineer and you learn network admin skills, you're going to be a network admin, even if you get 15 network admin certifications, because you're still focusing on admin stuff versus engineering things. Now, if you want to be an admin, we'll also talk about how to do that. So why is this? It's because people don't understand the roles. So if we understand that the architect role, like a cloud architect or a network architect or an enterprise architect or a security architect is about design and planning, the first thing that I need you to understand is these roles take su substantial business skills plus technical skills. Now, um, there's lots of videos on our channel about the non-technical skills that are needed by cloud architects, network architects, and others, so please go check that out. But let's talk about the tech skills for the architect. The architect has to understand the underlying technology. They have to understand the underlying network and how the network works. The architect needs to have to understand the underlying storage and how the storage work. The architect needs to understand the underlying applications and how they work and how they fit together. The underlying, the architect needs to understand the data and how the data is stored and how the data is structured and the data hygiene processes, et cetera. So the architect needs to understand the technology, how it works, but also how it fits together because that's what architecture is. It's creation of a blueprint that puts various technologies together into a strategy to optimize our client's business performance. So for the architect, it's about learning how the technology works and it's about learning how to use various technology components to solve business problems. So I kind of hope that works. Now, in order to do this, you have to get pretty theoretical and do a lot of noodle work. You got to do a lot of reading because you're going to understand because you have to understand it. And this for architecture work, you could do a million labs and you will never ever learn architecture. You will learn administration, but not architecture. And here's the reason why. You have to study and learn the technology, but no matter how much you use it, you will not learn it. I'll give you the example to prove it to you. All of you probably used a PC or a Mac today, right? And when you use that PC or Mac, do you understand the actual CPU on your PC or Mac? Do you understand how that CPU works, the instructions that it takes? Do you understand how many cores it works and how the core to core communication works in your CPU and the level one, level two, and level three cache in that CPU? Do you understand that interface into the motherboard and how that interacts to the DRAM that's sitting on your computer or the PCI bus that might be used to your NVMe drives and your GPUs, for example, and any other PCI cards? And the answer is no, you're not going to learn how these things work by uh, what do you call it? Using your PC each day. 
you by learning how to use your PC each day, you learn how to use your PC each day. By studying server or PC architecture and processor architecture and DRAM architecture, for example, you learn the architecture of a computer. So the architect needs to learn the entire big picture and they need to be taught it. They need to understand the concepts. Now let's talk about an engineer. Now the engineer themselves, they are kind of this in-between role. A good, strong engineer needs to understand the underlying technology and how the technology works and how to build it. So the engineer is typically going to be much more technical than the architect. That's why often you'll have a cloud architect go to cloud engineers, DevOps engineers, software engineers, security engineers to help them in their architectural design because the engineer is going to be the most technical person on the team. But the engineer needs to understand how the technology works. And here's why they need to understand the theory because the engineer needs to be able to performance tune and optimize. And in order to optimize, the engineer needs to know where the breaking points are, the little levers and knobs that you could turn and want to eke out the best performance, how to tune. So the engineer needs to go really, really deep on how this stuff works. And if you've ever been, say, a network engineer and you tried to debug an IP OSPF adjacency or a BGP neighbor relationship, if you didn't know those protocols, you weren't debugging anything. So the engineers need to get really deep here. Now, the engineers themselves also need to know how to build. So the engineers have to get very deep, hands-on, and building. But you have to remember the engineer is going to be busy. The engineer is not going to be building and configuring all day like an admin because they'll be doing a lot of noodle work. They're going to be thinking. They're going to be planning a performance tuning or optimization. So that engineer, when they have work to be done, is going to have to get very efficient. So a good, strong engineer is going to have some automation skills, some ability to automate what they do. Maybe it's with Linux scripting. Maybe it's with Python. Maybe it's something. Maybe it's infrastructure as code with a cloud, for a cloud engineer or a DevOps engineer. But it's going to be some way to be able to make a big impact in a short period of time because their role involves a lot of thinking, planning, collaboration with others. Now let's talk about the admin role. Now the admin role is a little bit different. The admin role is more of a technician role. And it's about how do I set up the web server? How do I upgrade the operating system on Red Hat? How do I do, write a Windows PowerShell script or a Bash shell script? So this is hands-on technician work. Now, how do you get good at hands-on technician work? Well, you get good at hands-on technician work by doing a lot of hands-on technician work. So if the person's goal is to get a job as a cloud admin and just configure virtual machines and storage and IAM users all day long, yeah, this is a person that needs to do a thousand hands-on one labs. Now let's talk about the certification differences that you would want out of all three. Architecture, because it's planning, typically does well with big, certifications and more business oriented certifications. Things like TOGAF or the CISSP or the CISM or the Cisco Certified Design Expert. Now, these are planning. And for example, in the Cisco Certified Design Expert, you'll be given an architectural challenge and a business problem. You'll have to create an architectural solution and you'll have to present it back and then now defend your architecture to the team. That's exactly what we do as architects. So there are typically your architecture certifications. There's not a lot of them. Just like there's no certification to be a CEO, because the architect role is an executive, we have some certifications, but they're loosely tied to certifications. The exception is, say, the CCDE and maybe TOGA. Now, when we get to engineering certifications, there's a lot that we can deal with here. And, and a lot of the certifications and the success people have had with certifications are actually coming from the big, uh, what do you call it, certifications that are out there. I'll give you some examples. A CCNP or a CCIE for a network engineer. A cloud engineer might have, say, an AWS Solutions Architect Professional, a Red Hat Certified Engineer to have good Linux skills, and maybe a DevOps Professional kind of certification. That kind of looks good for an engineer. Or I might have, say, a CCNP Security with a CISSP for a security engineer. Those kind of things tend to look very good because they are certifications that are half planning, half doing. Now, when it comes to the admin type uh, roles, 
Now we're talking about junior level associate certifications and why are they junior level? They have almost no knowledge about how the technology functions, but they're all focused on the technician side of how do I do this stuff? So what certifications provide good admin skills? Things like an AWS Solutions Architect Associate, a Cisco Certified Network Associate, RAT has, a, has this RHCSA. There are more your technician oriented roles. So the point is, is if you wanna be an architect, train architecture skills, learn to solve business problems, learn to plan, learn business. If you wanna be an engineer, get really deep on tech knowledge, learn conceptually how things work, learn the strengths, weaknesses, limitations, and breaking points of technology, and still get hands-on and do deep certifications like the CCIE or the CCNP. But don't go spend all your time in certifications, maybe only a percentage of it, and go deep and learn more about these things. Now, if you wanna be an admin, like a cloud admin or a sys admin, there are associate certifications. They are there to help you, and they're all about the name of something and how to configure it. So if that's your goal and that's what you want to do, go configure, get a whole bunch of them. The key is getting 10 different associate certifications doesn't make you look attractive if you want to be a cloud architect or a network architect because none of that has anything to do with by the building with how you do things as an architect. If you want to be an engineer, get a bunch of professional certifications and dive deep. Don't do a bunch of associate certifications. They're designed for admin roles. And if you love just being hands-on and just want to do stuff all day, yeah, get a bunch of these associate level hands-on, um, more technician-oriented roles, and you'll have a diverse set of skills for a wide variety of environments at that technician level. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like uh, and subscribe to our channel. Now, I run a free webinar or two every single week where we talk about how to become a cloud architect or an AI architect or an enterprise architect or a security architect. Come join us on one of the free webinars. The link is in the description of this video. We'll go over these architect roles, cover every skill you need. And of course, I'll spend an hour, hour and a half answering any tech career questions you want live on Zoom completely free. So sign up now and I look forward to seeing you there. This is Mike Gibbs and I'm signing off for now and I look forward to seeing you in another video. Take care.